Hey everyone, my name is Vivian Nguyen. I'm a candidate of pharmacy, class of 2021, and today I'll be going over the medication Dipagliflozin, commonly known as Farsiga. First, I'll be going over some patient counseling points. Farsiga is used along with diet and exercise to lower blood sugars in adults with type 2 diabetes. It can also be used in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction known as HEF-REF. Take Varsiga by mouth in the morning with or without food. It's only taken once a day. The most common side effects patients may experience are going to be vaginal yeast infection and yeast infection of the penis, stuffy or runny nose, sore throat, changes in urination, which includes urgent need to urinate more often, urinate in larger amount, or urinate at night. Contact your doctor right away if you develop these serious side effects, which includes sudden injury to the kidneys can occur with increased urination and dehydration, which can result in dizziness, lightheadedness, weakness, fainting, and thirst. Genital yeast infection, which can be seen with an odor, discharge, itchiness, or pain in the genital area. Ketoacidosis, which can be seen with vomiting, tiredness, trouble breathing, or stomach pain. Infection of the urinate tract, which results in burning or pain when urinating, a need to urinate frequently, and blood in the urine. Here is a formal introduction for the drug Farsiga, also known as the Pagliflozin. It belongs to the drug class called Sodium Glucose Co-Transporter 2, also known as SGLT2 inhibitors. It is an oral anti-diabetic drug. It is indicated for type 2 diabetes to improve blood sugar control along with diet and exercise. It reduces the risk of hospitalization for heart failure in patients who have no cardiovascular disease or multiple cardiovascular risk factors. It is also the first and only SGLT2 inhibitors approved for patients with HEF-REF with or without type 2 diabetes. It reduces the risk of cardiovascular death hospitalization for heart failure. Now let's focus on the pros and cons of this medication. Some pros is that first, it decreases A1C by 0.7 to 1%. Second, it reduces the risk of hospitalization for heart failures in patients with or without type 2 diabetes. Third, it promotes weight loss. And last, it is beneficial in slowing the progression of diabetic kidney disease. Some cons of this medication is that it does have unfavorable side effects. It has increased risk of bladder cancer and it increases LDL. This medication is also costly compared to the other anti-diabetic drugs. It's important to understand how Farsigo works. Now I'm going to go into detail about the mechanism of action. Glucose reabsorption is accomplished with the active transport of glucose by sodium coupled glucose transporter SGLT1 and SGLT2 found in the kidneys. SGLT1 is in the heart, intestine, trachea, and kidneys, whereas SGLT2 is located only in the kidneys. Farsiga reduces the reabsorption of glucose and sodium by inhibiting SGLT2 in the proximal renal tubules, resulting in increased urinary glucose excretion, increased delivery of sodium to the distal tubules, which may influence several physiological functions, including, but not restricted to, lowering preload, the pressure under which the heart fills is reduced, lowering afterload, the resistance against which the heart pump is reduced, and downregulation of elevated sympathetic activities. Dosage and formulation. Farsica comes in 5 mg and 10 mg tablets. In patients with type 2 diabetes to improve glycemic control, patients can start off with a 5 mg once daily, taken in the morning, increase doses to 10 mg once daily in patients tolerating 5 mg to require additional glycemic control. In patients with type 2 diabetes to reduce the risk of hospitalization for heart failure, the recommended dose is 10 mg once daily. In patients with just heart failure and no type 2 diabetes, the recommended dose for Farsiga is 10 mg once daily. Dose adjustment considerations in patients taking Farsiga. No phatic dose adjustment is necessary. Before starting Farsiga, patient's baseline renal function test is required, as well as regular renal function monitoring throughout the course of treatment. No dose adjustment is necessary for an EGFR of 45 or above. In patients with type 2 diabetes for glycemic control, an EGFR from 45 to 30 is not recommended and it is contraindicated in patients with an EGFR of less than 30. 
For an EGFR from 45 to 30 in patients with type 2 diabetes for the use in patients with heart failure and or patients with or at risk of ASCVD disease, there's insufficient data to support dosing recommendations. For an EGFR of less than 30, insufficient data to support dosing recommendations in HFREF patients with or without type 2 diabetes. All indications with end-stage renal disease or patients on dialysis, Farsiga is contraindicated. We talked about common side effects earlier, so now we're going to focus on other adverse effects. That includes weight loss, hypoglycemia, increased urination, increased thirst, increased magnesium slash phosphate, vaginal yeast infection, yeast infection of the penis, and urinary tract infections. Some warnings and precautions you should be aware of while taking Farsiga is that there's an increased risk of bladder cancer. An imbalance in bladder cancer was observed in clinical trials. People who took Farsiga in clinical studies were five times more likely to develop bladder cancer than people who took another diabetes drug. Farsiga might also make existing bladder cancer worse or speed up the development of bladder cancer in patients who are at risk. Farsiga should not be used in patients with active bladder cancer and should be used in cautions in patients with prior history of bladder cancers. Other warning precaution is that it can cause ketoacidosis, including fatal cases, uroceptus and pyelonephritis, necrotizing fasciata of the perium, increased LDL, hypotension, acute kidney injury, and renal impairment due to intravascular volume depletions. Now let's go over some monitoring parameters for Farsiga. For efficacy, you want to monitor A1C at least twice yearly in patients who have stable glycemic control and are meeting treatment goals. Quarterly in patients not meeting treatment goals or with therapy change. You also want to monitor for blood glucose. As for safety, you want to monitor renal function at baseline and periodically during treatments, signs and symptoms of genital yeast infections, signs and symptoms of ketoacidosis, signs and symptoms of urinary tract infections, and volume status, which includes weight, blood pressure, hematocrit, and electrolytes. These are my references. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.